Once I had a secret love that lived within the heart of me. In a little less than seven minutes, I'm going to be bidding on this Atwater Kent type E2 speaker from the 1920s. Uh, the current bid is $91.99. Uh, I'm going to blow in there at the last second with $167.99, and hopefully that'll wipe everybody out. And I don't expect to pay that much for the speaker, but you know, that's what the heck. You know, it's a chance you take. You're looking at a radio that weighs 40 pounds. It cost $88, and it was manufactured in 1927. It came without a speaker, and it came without tubes. Back in those days, you had to buy your tube separately. It's an Atwater Kent Model 37, and it is an AC radio. You plug it into the wall. That speaker is a Rolla speaker, manufactured about oh, 1927, 1928 also. And you'll notice that the Rolla speaker is sitting on top of the radio kind of crooked-like. And there's a reason for that. And you're about to hear all about it. Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. I've got a good story for you today. It involves, as you know, this 1927 Atwater Kent Model 37. About two months ago, my son contacted me, and he said he had watched a TV show. I think it's called American Restorations or something like that. I don't watch much TV, so I don't know any of the shows today. And he said that a customer brought in and that water can't model 37 and asked the guy on the show who has the restoration shop to restore the radio for him and uh, this is what the model 37 looked like that the fella brought in it, it, it came in two different colors a lot of people thought that was a, some custom job done by an owner you know or had it done especially and that's not true the the, the 1937 uh, model 37 came uh, like this and it also came like this and uh, with this speaker so that's kind of a, a cool looking radio right there my son really liked that radio and the reason he liked it is because sitting on top now this one here does not have it but sitting on top of the one that was on that television was a gold medallion of a sailing ship you know with the masts and the, and the sails all billowing out and my boy is a, uh, he's a mechanical engineer and he's in the uh, Navy Reserves as a CB. He's an officer in the Navy Reserve CBs. And he's always liked the ocean. Oh, you know, if someday he said he wants to move and be next to the ocean and all that stuff. I'm not me. You know, I'm not into to the sea, into the ocean and all that stuff, but he is. And he and his wife both enjoy it. That's why they go on a lot of cruises, you know. They like being out in the ocean all the time. Anyway, he contacted me. He said, Dad, you think you can get me one of those radios? I said, well, yeah, I guess. He said, I want I'll make sure it's got that medallion on there with that, with that big old ship, you know, that old sailing ship. He said, that, that's what really I like the best. I said, yeah, I can probably get you one. Uh, I said, I'll do my best. It won't be cheap. Uh, it shouldn't be all that expensive either. He said, okay, just do what you can. I put an advertisement in the antique radio forum, and I just basically said, "Hey, look, I want an antique, uh, or I want a uh, an Atwater Camp Model 37 in good condition, res good restorable condition. I don't want any junk. Uh, let me know what you've got." Well, a fellow named Brian, a couple of days later, contacted me, and he's from Nevada, if I recall. It's been it's been a couple months, like I said. And he said, John, here's what he wrote. He said, John, I have an Atwater Kent Model 37 with a roll of speaker that was bought along with it back in the 1920s. At one point a few years ago, I restored them and had them playing. But the last time I turned it on, it didn't pick anything up. So I guess it probably needs some additional repair. I have pretty much had to give up on doing uh, much myself anymore due to uh, some arthritis that's hit me over the past year. And then he told me the story behind this radio. This radio came from the gold country of California, uh, a place called Murphy's, California. And there was a gold mine there called the Royal Gold Mine. And the family that owned that Royal Gold Mine 
were the ones that purchased this radio and this speaker. And they had it in a very big house. Uh, of course, you know, the gold mine owners. I mean, you don't own a gold mine uh, back in the 20s and the early 30s and, and even the 40s. Uh, you could live in a pretty big house. And from what I've been able to dig up, I'm, I'm almost certain it's the same gold mine. It's closed down now. It shut down after World War II. But it was in uh, Calaveras County, and it was called the Royal Copperopolis, Royal Gold Mine, uh, 1,200 feet deep. Pretty big gold mine. Well, apparently there was a dispute at one time between the workers and the owners of the gold mine the people who bought this radio and this speaker. And the owners of the gold mine decided that they better hide the records of the mine uh, as part of their, you know, protective measures. So they had a secret room built in their mansion or in their large house. And they, in that secret room, this hidden room uh, on the second floor, from what I understand, they put the records of the gold mine. They had a few other things stashed in there. And they stayed there for years and years and years and years. And there was also another room or another space that was built uh, by brick. There was also a secret chamber in the house. Right? Apparently, they, held, they, they stored gold and records and things like that in the hidden room on the second floor. But there's really no... Uh, known uh, item of what was stored in the bricked in area. It was a false wall. Well, the, the, the mine closed, the people that owned the mine died, and the daughter got the house, the daughter got what was left of the mine, she got everything, and then eventually she died also. And her husband, uh, who lived apart from her at this time, she got, he got a friend of his and he said, hey look, let, let's go down to the house and clean it out, I need some help. My wife passed away. He said, okay. Well, they get down there, and that's when they discovered, in the process of cleaning this house out, they discovered the secret room on the second floor. Well, in that room, in addition to some of the things I've already told you, they, they didn't find any gold, unfortunately, but they did find this radio and this speaker. And that speaker was sitting exactly on that radio, as you see right now. And it sat hidden in that room for 75 years. This is incredible. They discovered it, brought it out, and then, of course, Brian got a hold of it. He was one of the people that helped clean out the house. And he had it working, and it's now not working. And I know why it's not working, but I don't know much about these radios. This is the other project I told you about that I'll be working on in addition to the RCA television that we're restoring. So what I'm going to do is bring you close, and uh, I'm going to take this speaker off, and then you'll see why it's sitting like this. Now, I'll remove the top. We'll take a look at the tubes. I don't know much about them. I'll just kind of let you look down inside of it, and, and then we'll call this thing a day. But I, I wanted you to see this radio and hear this amazing story. 75 years sitting in a hidden room out in uh, California. Wow. The speaker's been removed and you can see the discoloration. This is the medallion and it's in beautiful pristine condition. There is not a scratch, not a wear mark, nothing. Maybe a little tiny wear mark right here, but overall it's in just mint condition. That speaker having, this was originally a gold color top and the speaker protected the majority of it. The rest of it, right around here like this, I guess just got exposed to dirt. I'm not sure. There may be a way to bring that gold back. I'm not certain. And uh, But that's what comes, if it were my radio, I'd leave it exactly like it is. Because that, this whole story, to me, is just fascinating. And, you know, this is a tuned radio frequency. A TRF radio. You know, it's... You turn one knob, and then you turn another, and then another, until you get it all in. And the on-off switch is here. The electrical cord that the previous owner put on it, that is not original. Let's pop the top and take a look inside it. You might not be able to see it, but right down in there is a broken wire off of this coil. It's hanging down in there. You can barely make it out. 
right, right there where my finger is. If I can repair that, this radio will probably work. It just broke probably from old age, as long as I have continuity through it. But look at these old tubes. Is this amazing? I've taken the screws out of this thing here because I wanted to see what was underneath it. And that's what's underneath. These are the screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tubes. I don't know what's down in here. I don't know what's where. I guess it doesn't really matter. But these are the, uh, you'll notice that when I turn this one knob, both of these tuning capacitors operate. Actually, all three of them operate. Check that out. Whoa. And then we have, I guess, fine tune. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what these are. Uh, filter caps, maybe. I've got a lot of learning to do on this thing. This is one of these deals I'm just going to kind of take my time. I'd like to at least get it operational. Then, I, then I'd feel a whole lot better. I like these old tubes like that. I don't know what they're called. I think they're called globe tubes or something like that. I don't know. First ones I've ever owned, actually. First of all, I don't own them. My son does. He's the one that paid for all this. Well, I just wanted you to see it. That's what she looks like. Uh, my, my son has not yet seen this. It's got a little bit of rust down in the corner there. And a little bit of rust down in there that I think we can fix. But other than that, pretty darn good condition. Well, that's it for now. Hidden in a room, 75 years. I'll tell you what, that's a good story. We'll see you next time. This is John. Hold it, hold it, stop the music. We got one more thing to cover. As you can see, I was successful in winning the bid for that speaker. So now we have a matching speaker to go with our Model 37. All too soon my secret love became impatient to be free.